This always happens when I meet someone. Every time I tell them that I'm a neuroscientist, they ask me about my college degree. And the same surprised face appears when I tell them that I graduated in fashion. And if I told them that I used to be a DJ and used to play electronic music in South America and Europe, I guess they would just give up trying to understand. I confess that sometimes I don't understand myself either. But the truth is that our brain likes to play tricks with our minds, to protect us and to make us grow. That's how great life stories happen. Here's mine. My parents used to fight. They used to fight a lot. They weren't physically violent with me. Well, at least not all the time, but it was hard. I grew up isolating myself from them, from reality, and from everything. This made me create a whole new world in my head. Music was my best company, so I created this word of delusion with it, to be more specific with electronic music. The raving world was so free, so new, that I felt I was dancing for word peace. I thought I was fighting for something worthwhile. The brain is always trying to make sense of things. One of its functions is to explain all the whys. But it turns out that sometimes, instead of explaining the why, we look for confirmation for something that we already believe in. Researchers call that confirmation bias. We all do that, and that's a part of who we are. All that dream work got me to study fashion, which was my choice when I got into college. In my third year, I started to feel a constant pain in my right hand. I went to a lot of doctors, did physiotherapy, and all that was recommended. Nothing worked. I couldn't draw into my homework because I couldn't use my right hand. So one day my teacher told me, if you can't use the right hand, use the left one. A considerable majority of individuals, around 80 to 90%, are right-handed. The importance of studies on handedness is the fact that our brains work in an asymmetrical matter with functional authorization of cerebral dominance. But no, this is not a story about me being an exceptional left-handed person. I tried to, but it just didn't pan out. In my last year of college, I didn't know what to do for my final project. Suddenly, it just hit me. Oh, why don't I use my parents' fights as a theme and make an essay of photos out of it? That was exactly what I did. I didn't know at that time, but that was when I started to study people's brains and behavior. I knew they enjoy those fights. I just didn't understand why. A naha moment is a moment of sudden realization, inspiration, and insight, an issue of great interest in neuroscience. Aha moments don't materialize from thin air. They are the results of a brain's working in a background puzzle. And then one day, suddenly, the final piece drops in place. For the final project, I made an essay of 20 photos of two guys fighting inside an elevator. The purpose was to show that in spite of everything, they were actually enjoying the fight. Well, I got the best grade of that year and my work was exposed in a lot of venues. The neurobiology of pain and pleasure are very alike. When you fight or you pass through a pleasurable situation, your adrenaline and dopamine levels go up and that can be addictive because of the thrills involved. Well, my father died right before the bang and never saw this work. I got very sad when he died, but together with that sadness, there was this feeling that all those fights and violence were over. There was a part of me that felt relieved. Unfortunately, that was short-lived. A few months after he died, my mom started to date an alcoholic and she began to gamble. The brain can suffer a lot of damage from a traumatic episode. This emotional stress can cause several disorders, like anxiety and depression, but also other ones, like compulsions and addictions. With the money that my father left me, 
I decided to open a business. And yes, a nightclub just seemed to be the best option. You can't imagine how that worked, right? I got broke. I also tried to open a fashion store. That didn't work either. With lots of debts and feeling heartbroken and broke, I decided to sell my car, leave everything behind, and go to Italy to make my Italian citizenship and maybe start a business from scratch in Barcelona. After passing through hell, I got the citizenship and then I went to Barcelona and started a new life. Lifelong bilinguals manifest intriguing divergencies in how the brain processes language. The bilingual brain exercises immense control to stop words coming out in the wrong tongue, and this improves concentration and multitasking. But on a mundane level, I just feel like a crazy person that mixes words and sentences of a lot of languages when I'm speaking. Anyway, Remember that story of my hands? You see, when I was in Europe, I had a lot of jobs where I had to use my hands. I worked as a maid, as a waitress, and also at a call center. So the pain got worse and worse. I did new treatments, went to new doctors, but same story. Nothing worked. An ongoing pain produces progressive alterations in the brain, changing its functionality, structural, and chemical connections. Until now, there's no effective treatment to it. In 2008, there was a financial crisis worldwide and my companion lost his job. So we decided to move to Brazil and start a new life from scratch. He was a music producer and I knew a lot of people in the area, so it looked like a win-win situation. As soon as we got to Brazil, I opened a business and started to work in a music agency. I was selling artists everywhere and I got really good at it. But my pain kept getting worse and worse. And I was also having a lot of issues in my relationship with my companion. Toxic relationships are very related with the way we deal with fear. They trigger our amygdala, the center in our brain for a fight or flight response. The brain responds with psychosomatic disorders like anxiety, for example. Usually, the person doesn't realize that he or she is stuck in a cycle of abuse because a lot of false beliefs are built up and created during the relationship. So, one day I went to this doctor, a physiatrist. He was very understanding and told me that if I wanted to stop feeling that pain, I would have to change my whole life. I remember going to work that day and standing in front of the computer and thinking, why not leave everything to study neuroscience? I had already made a music therapy specialization, which was pretty cool and kind of got me to the subject. I was also too tired of dealing with so many artists and that job didn't seem to fulfill me anymore. So I entered the university website, looked up for neuroscience, and saw that the registration was on into the following day. So I thought, why not? I did the description, left my job, and for 20 days, I studied neuroscience like crazy. I had never studied neuroscience before, and it was a 2,000-page book I had in front of me. On the day of the exam, I cried compulsively because I was pretty sure I wouldn't pass. But guess what? I passed. Learning is a physical process in which new knowledge is represented by new brain cells connections. The strength and formation of these connections are facilitated by chemicals in the brain. Nature and nurture can affect the learning brain, but learning is possible even to the nature brain. Since I started my academic career, everything you can imagine happened. My aunt had a stroke and went to live in my house for a while. My mentor was diagnosed with cancer. I got divorced. My grandma had to be hospitalized with Alzheimer's disease. And after she died, 
My mom studied gambling again, and she spent all of her money. Then she broke her leg, became confined in bed, and died from diabetes eight months after that. She was everything to me. A total crazy and a predictable personality. A kind of person screenwriters would die to write about. She taught me English before I learned Portuguese. She supported me in all my crazy decisions. And most of the time, I had to be her mom. Yes, too many losses to handle. And let's not forget our word pandemic, right? So yes, my academic life is very challenging. But I was able to finish my master's degree and now I'm about to finish my PhD. Resilience is the process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, or significant sources of stress. It is a dynamic interaction between internal predispositions and external experiences. Like a muscle, it can be built. It just takes intentionality, willpower, and time. In 2005, I had to make a poverty ID. I got this ID when I was living in Europe and I had nothing to eat. Every time I look at it, I don't feel bad. I actually feel very proud because no matter what situation you go through in life, you can always change it. And yes, your brain can help you with that. That's called neuroplasticity. The more you do something, the more your brain learns and gets used to it. The more you fight, the more resilient you are. The more your brain learns how to deal with difficult situations. So even if you think that there's no way out, even if you think that that's the end, remember that for your brain, it might be just the beginning of a beautiful new journey. One of my dreams in life was to do a TED presentation. I would never imagine that this was going to happen and so soon. When I got the invitation, I didn't know on which subject I could talk about. Okay, my project is cool. I'm creating a test via mobile to identify if someone has been drinking or not before driving. I'm also involved in a lot of study groups that study anomalous psychology with things like telepathy, telekinesis, spirits, magic, hypnosis, and religion. And I also study the neuroscience of fashion and also the science of yoga and meditation, subjects that really help me with my pain problem. I could talk about these matters for hours, but the creative brain has nothing to do with being rational. So I just started writing and remembering all of my journey. And then I realized how neuroscience was there since the beginning. Being self-aware and knowing the truth of who we really are is what will make us change the world. And to change the world, we need to begin with understanding and changing ourselves. And for me, neuroscience is the way that we might get there. Thank you.